The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. We want to look at vengeance, God's prerogative. So vengeance is God's prerogative. We should just leave that for God. Let's take Romans 12, verse 17 through 19 again. Romans 12, from verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I'll repay, says the Lord. Mofa boni entia obiara boni soka na muna mwenye enoma eye fe ni penina enimse ibetu mia mofa mdi muni ni penina entina asungue mu adofon mun to talk muho muho yure ne mum muni yama unyango pon ebufu na watre se me anagreto ewo me miara enemetu yaka irade na okansa. We have said that when you don't forgive and you hold on to a grudge. What you'll be doing is that you'll be nursing the grudge. And, and that will be treading dangerously towards vengeance. We said last week that bitter spirits escalate wickedness in the heart. So this evening, like we said, we want to eat, reiterate the fact that vengeance is God's prerogative. We should not interfere with what is his right. Now he will repay at the proper time and in the, in the proper manner. See, repaying evil for evil is a common practice in the world. Now people talk of uh, giving tit for tat. Or repaying in kind. I will pay him in kind. Or, or giving someone what they deserve. But this delight to, to revenge should have no space in the heart of the believer. Vengeance is the loss. None should interfere with that. He will repay at the proper time and in the proper manner. See, that said, the Apostle Paul recognizes that it is sometimes not just possible to live at peace with all men. Now, even when we, one makes the efforts, he understands that some people can be very, very overbearing. He also acknowledges the human tendency to revenge. So he admonished the brethren 
in Rome and by extension all of us to leave room for God's wrath. And the Roman folk as I and I yen so say Bribiemono Yenyamu Yamia Bufu. Now leaving room for God's wrath means to forgive. So yes, I just would the idea no check. See, that is our the righteous requirement concerning us. Forgive. Now yes, so you have terms at training for no as they say you did. As human beings, the righteous requirement concerning us, so far as offenses are concerned, is to let go, forgive. See, holding on to a grudge keeps you in bondage. See, it's when you are holding a grudge against someone. If you do not take care. When you just wake up from bed, that will be the first story of the day that you discuss with your wife. That will be your lunch. That will be your dinner. Sometimes you even sleep and have a dream that this man that you have a grudge against is fighting with you. And, and, and sometimes your moves are dictated by the actions and inaction of such people. To some extent that when you know that you are going for a particular meeting and you meet such people there, you are tempted to stay at home. <laughs> Holding on to a grudge <laughs> will keep you in bondage. You need to free yourself today like a bear from the foulest snare. Let go the pain and release no evil against such people. No. 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 It is only at this point that you give room for God to surface. Do not take revenge, my dear friends. But leave room for God's wrath. For it is written. And Pilate says that what is written is written. It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. See, brothers and sisters, God judges. He doesn't just avenge, he judges before he avenges. That is why he doesn't pay attention to our wishes. Because he will judge and then he avenges. You can't say, God, God, avenge, avenge. No, he will judge. And then you avenge. And then you avenge. God judges. God weighs these. He reads motives. And he tests hearts. See, God weighs these. He reads motives. He tests hearts. It doesn't matter how you are explaining your side of the story. God knows. He knows how to weigh it. Proverbs 24 verse 12. I want you to pay attention to these verses please. I say if you say, comma, but we know nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life knows it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So if you say, this is what can say, but we, we know nothing about this. You can say it. You can say it. But the one who weighs heart perceives it. The one who guides our life, he said, doesn't he know? The problem with 
judgment is that see it isn't only god who is aware of the truth too. Satan too is aware of the truth. <laughs> That's the problem with judgment. Somewhere what Tim will want to say, and you and Yanko Ponko and you Nim Nocreno or Bon Samson Nim Nocre was him. That's the problem. That's the only problem I have. The father, the devil is also aware. <laughs> so let's go to Proverbs 21, verse 2. Let's go to Proverbs 21, verse 2. Let's go to Proverbs 21, verse 2. Now let's project that one. And as many of you that can read, let's read. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs their heart. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. Now we have studied that bitter people feel justified by holding on to grudge. Yeah, because to them, someone has offended them. And that they judge their, that feeling as a justified anger. A person may, may think their own ways are right. But the Lord weighs the heart. Now let us take this big one from Proverbs 16, verse 2. Proverbs 16, verse 2. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Now, you see, even God knows the degree of wickedness in an act of sin. Sometimes people say every sin is sin. It is only on the scale of God that the weights are weighed. <laughs> uh, some sins are weightier than others. Some sins are weightier. It is the scale of God that truly determines the level of wickedness in an act of sin. He judges the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. The Bible says that nothing in all creation is hidden from his sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of whom we must give account. See, one day David impregnated someone's wife. And then subsequently killed the husband. And then when the matter was brought to him, he, he found some nice words to console the messenger. And the scripture says that when Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. Now, David Now, so let's read Second Samuel chapter eleven. Let's take verse twenty-seven. In fact, it's the last verse in that chapter. Second Samuel. Now, after the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. Now, kuna ye bre kwe muno, David suma ma wako fa no ba ni fiye na obeye ni yere na owo oba bere ma emano. Now, see, this action of David will be praised by all Israel. Adofunum sa David na diye no. Now, for the wife of a soldier 
who went for battle uh, because of the nation Israel uh, for for the husband of uh, for the husband of this woman to die because he went out for battle uh, for the people of Israel and for the king to graciously marry this woman people will say that the king has done well adofo nom se osojani sreni akọ akọ e di ama Israel no akọ to akọ no no se ohini fa ni yire e ye no se ono ankasa ni yire a obi biara be bon se mama no yeah they will, they will clap for the obi biara be tu chama no kra yeah, they think that the, the, the king has done this woman good. But let's read, let's read the last line. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. Because God knows the details. The country folks may not know. So they will be praising the king. But God knows the details. You see, when it comes to Bathsheba and Uriah, the fact that David slept with this woman and the fact that David killed Uriah are two separate sins. David, as, as you read on the account of David, the Bible keeps leaving uh, the affair of Bathsheba behind and keep holding on to the killing of Uriah. Now, you know why? The degree of wickedness in that one is serious it's not just the killing but attempted to kill and killing you see and the way he did it he masterminded it days thinking through thinking through but if you look at how he had an affair with this woman the bible said that he just saw this woman and he was overtaken so god will say that ah, what you did is it's not good and then he takes the big one he went ahead and killed the husband. Why? God holds on to that one. Bitter people are always scheming. That is why God does not like that kind of heart. And they, are, they are looking for what? Who knows? What are they looking for? Find the name they were eh? Opportune time. Wope every pema will be to me a sunny one. Looking for the right space to strike. Wope kwaya wope faso na we di ipano and as a one one ton of it. So let's study the life of David and Saul. The mummy and King Kai and Fat David and Saul. I'll be talking about how David carefully stayed away from revenge. The new bedding come out after sending David or Bob Modian so between one if you are returned. First Samuel 24. Let's take from verse 3. Yeah, King Kai, Samuel, Homer, Edikaino, Eti, Edununa, if you mean San Eko. First Samuel 24 and from verse 3. He came to the sheep pen along the way. A cave was there. And Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the same cave. Now, Odru and Yemua, a walk on no sore no honor. Now, Obodan be or hot. Now, Solo, Senimu, said Orikojan and nine. Now, David and Nippon so at it, Obodan no more no And so, I want to take the verse four from the New Living Translation. It was so in Yemu nine. N um, now see your op opportunity now is your opportunity David's men whispered to him because Saul has entered the cave so, now is your opportunity they whispered to him then they said today the Lord is telling you I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with to do with as you wish see god will never put your enemy in your power for you to do with the enemy as you wish because vengeance is the loss so what they are saying is wrong 
Inti chosa mi se na David ni pano e kanchire no se she da e radi kanchire o se she me de watamfo ebe se wansa na waye no se di e ye we ni suono enye she unyame onfa watamfo insha wansa se yendi o pe sans or no eni abireto wano. And that is not scripture. Na we enye chira wano. Now is your opportunity. Se brinu niye. So and this oh, these young men are suffering because of so. And they know that by killing Saul, the battle will be over. They will go back home. And this man has come so close to them. And this is the day God spoke to you about. But David would not do that. He even went ahead and then try he cut the piece of Saul's garment. And he was we was conscience stricken. Now, trust me, say, Obo Modi and Chibi, baby, I saw you one. I know you are not part of Kerini. I know. Stint in verse seven, NIV. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Now, David did it and sent me a ball. Nipa no pim. Na wan pene amma wan sorry enti a solo. Na solo sorry free abo dani mo esi mu kwane kwane so. Now please listen to me. Adofunum umi enti. Many a times is the people around you who always be fooling the victims. And pen pen unu nipe kwa mweshi ano ena washe ya odi enu mo kena. Now stay your course. Omo diya shwe ni muti. And have a good heart. Na nyakuma pa. Make sure that you rebuke such people. When they want to keep you bitter. Like David did. See this young man too. They had a cause to, 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 to kind of be not be too happy about the action of their master. And but David has also resolved that he will not avenge himself. Now let's go to verse 12. Verse 12. This is David to Saul. May the Lord judge between you and me. And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you. So you know David can or say Radi a woman won't tell a thing. Now a radi and ye my re to de won some now mean sad ye a ring count. This one, this this statement is true for all generations. Okay, same way and ukure a bribia. God will always judge between. And then when he finds the one who is wrong, the Lord will avenge. Now hold on to that one. David said, For my hand will not touch you. I pray that your hand will not touch your enemy. God will avenge. And he knows how to do it. He knows how to do it. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go to verse 16 of yeah, this same chapter. I want you to come with me to verse 16. Are you are you here? Yeah. Uh, or oh, you are thinking about <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So verse 16. See that this is how the scripture reads. When David find finished saying this. Saul asks. See, David actually stood somewhere and now trying to let Saul examine the hem of his garment to see that he indeed cut it and all that he told him has spared your life. After he has finished saying this, let's listen to Paul. Paul asks, Is that your voice, David, my son? When did he become your son? Saul, David, Saul, David, 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 let me say this. Don't allow 
the tears of bitter persons deceive you. I don't know me. I make any me makwai emani odi ya ono ni nisu enada. Bitterness is a seed. Ya odi owe e ya awamina ba. Unless until the seed is uprooted, the emotions they display cannot be trusted. So abana sin tu ya ni anipa nube ye biarache eno wafu akume ni echiri. Verse 17 says that you are more righteous than I. He said, You have treated me well. Oh, but over. Now, what was one? I say, Now, what country did David say? What's an enemy? If he said, What the papa at Yamaka? I said, Yeah, also, I will go to no Abwa. It's lying. Why am I saying this? I didn't think I make a way. Let's go to the next chapter. Let's go to chapter 26. Verse 1. The Ziphites went to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding on the hill of Hakila, which faces Jeshimon? So Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with his 3,000 selected Israel troops. To search for who? Was he not the one who was crying? Saying that I will not do anything against you. Don't let the tears of bitter people deceive you. Now, okay, kai in your mum, you know, a dick, I know. Saul, look, baby, be a David, the shepherd, or no, boy, ni pardon, or do you want every fan on no tea? David, yeah, was signed copper, no, I change view. But in this same chapter, David spares Saul's life again. And so, I help you, David. And can all say Saul. And so, this time, the scripture says that God has actually put Saul into deep sleep. I hate to say, I'm saying, not Saul. When you're going to put him on a da in a hole. And all his men around him were sleeping. Now, Nipa, and they can't wait to see him. Now, I'm going to put him on a da. Then, Abishah told King David, verse 8. Now, what can you go do in your mouth and what you are? Abishah, catch it on him, David, he said. Abishah said to David, Today, God has delivered your enemy into your hands. God does not deliver our enemies into our hands. I said, and when you go on the word town for Asha on Sasha, when you on fire town for Shay and so now let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I won't strike twice. Now, if I mean for piano, me one of me could turn a firm prayer. Because the man is sleeping. Sunset down for no other deep sleep. What done now? Abner and all his guys were also sleeping. Abner and the merry men in the da. But let's listen to David. And so, Mummy and Tia David can. But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Now, hold on to that. Now, David, catch it. Abishai said, Enkuno. I've been reading this scripture, but this afternoon I had a, a different understanding. I don't know. My king can search through ya and answer me. Do hey, and every aim and who know. Many of us as Christians will not kill. You move a brace, say a jiddy for you, Kumo. But we destroy people. Now, so you say, Nipa, don't destroy him. Men say no. Don't destroy him. Men say no. Don't be speaking evil about him. Men can ne bone and fano. Sometimes you know that what you are saying is not true, but you continue to say it. I told you be a woman said your walk and look be any now so be caught. Don't destroy him. Men say no. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Why an ordinary and sa a can a rade the wasrano na odibim? Now listen to David. As surely as the Lord lives, he said. The Lord Himself will strike him, or his time will come and he will die. But even over, what kind of patience is this? And he will go into, or he will go to into battle and perish. Three things: the Lord Himself will what strike him, or his time will come and he will die. And the people will not take it. Look at that vein. And then, or you will go to battle and perish. And some of David can and say. Se eurade ti asie ji eurade eno be ka no se ni da bedru na wawu ana se obekosa na wakopra akono see when Saul died people actually suspected that David might have 
mastermind that is killing. And often on brass, all the way, and on that, depending on how you say, if you are David, and now, or Shemi Yakun. So they watched him. They listened to the words that were coming out of his mouth when he was lamenting. Then they concluded that David has no hand in the killing of Saul. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear and water jack that are near his head and let's go na ewrade emmanum parami se metene mensa maka de ewrade asra no na afei fa pia no ene ni suo kruwa no wona tifi na yenko you see from chapter 4 to chapter 26 the episodes are all the same the theme is the same david refusing to revenge adofonom efi e e e efi enyumu edionu David but in chapter 25 uh, the same issue comes up unexpectedly and he is about to act in a pure natural way now, when uh, God sends Abigail to help him Mm. You see, he wanted to kill Naba. Because of the way Naba had reacted to his messenger's uh, plea. Abigail had to speak to his conscience. But you can't do this. One day you will mount the throne. And the king should not carry needless bloodshed. Needless bloodshed. Your conscience will tell you that you have killed somebody's husband for nothing. Because Naba reserved the right whether to give you food or not. After all, he didn't ask you to come and lurk around. And says one here no tregaswa or di and hunima enye papa and as any tibua a buni for ewa obi mojaho is hand say naba or quite so be money beane and nanse om man. Let's read verse 31. Let's listen to Abigail. My Lord will not have on his conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed or having avenged himself. And when the Lord your God has brought my Lord's success, remember your servant. Yeah. David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. David said, Abigail said, in Shiranka, Radia, was small, Ababesiame, and ne, now what poor me, said Manto, would be so every And I like verse 39. Now, many J. Emu Edia Sabako, okay, verse 38. Let's read verse 38. All of us who can read. About 10 days later, the Lord struck Naba and he died. Just him, they say, Beye, and not do a cheno, when you're coupon, Bonabal, and he even, God he even knows how to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Ten days later, <laughs> the man was gone. <laughs> but David said, Thank you for, for helping me. <laughs> so David said, I want to what? avenge with my own hands. <laughs> Thank you. Now, so when he heard that Naba was dead, he went for the wife. We all need wise partners. So. We don't need the Jezebelical wife. So. Yeah, when you come, so what is happening? He said, Naba, so I'll kill him for you. No, you don't, you don't need such a wife. Vengeance is God's prerogative. We should not interfere with that. It is God's right. He will repay at the proper time and in the proper manner. He will judge. 
He will avenge. What we need to do is to forgive. I pray that you, you were able to hold on to something. Now, if David did it, you can also do it. I don't think it was that easy for David and his men. But don't let us revenge on somebody you perceive as an offender. If you do that, God knows. And if you leave room for God's wrath, he knows what to do. Let's stay focused. Let us pray that God will help us. May the Lord grant us all of our strength to be able to live a life without revenge.